This is a real tragedy what happened and I feel for all of those who have lost a lot of money during this. Uh, I lost some money, luckily I was able to come out not too badly hurt, but I do wanna talk about Luna and Terra and what's going on, kind of how it started and where we're at now and what I ended up doing during this process. So this is not financial advice, I'm not in it, financial advisor, do your own research. This is very important. And I think this is one of the learning experience that we can take away from what happened during Luna and UST. Here we are, Luna Terra, current market cap 1.48 billion. I think it had a market cap of over a hundred billion. We dropped probably 70, $80 billion in one day. And it's a true tragedy what happened and it really hurts the cryptocurrency space as a whole and it really hurts all those small people out there. I couldn't count the number of people that I saw on Twitter and YouTube talking about how much they lost, life savings, all this stuff. It's it's, it's really terrible. Um, but essentially, here's what I didn't understand about the UST and Luna ecosystem when I invested in it. Luckily, I didn't actually hold too much Luna itself. I had more in UST and I was using Anchor Protocol, which seemed really great, but I didn't realize that UST being an algorithmic stable coin was not backed by anything essentially. So it uses the buying and selling of Luna uh, to suppress or raise the price of UST to be a dollar, but there's nothing, there's no actual assets behind UST to keep it from crashing. So essentially what could happen is UST can be burned uh, and mint Luna at a one to one at a one dollar to one dollar rate. So if the price of if the price of UST were to go higher than a dollar, then an arbitrager could take their Luna, swap it for UST, which would essentially burn the Luna, mint UST, and they would have UST that was now worth say one point oh five dollars, and they could sell it for that small profit of 0 0.05 cents, which would then put selling pressure on UST and bring the price down. Now, the same could work the opposite direction where if the price of UST dropped below a dollar, you could burn or swap UST for Luna at a, at a dollar and you get a dollar worth of Luna, you could sell Luna and you'd make the profits on the difference. So, and that would essentially decrease the supply of UST. Now this works when the supply and demand for UST and the supply and demand for Luna are both good. If there's an extreme difference that's where something like what happened could happen. Now, there are also rumors that are going on right now about essentially an attack on UST from large wallets and large institutions uh, to topple this because there's basically a, uh, a loophole or like a fault in this algorithmic stablecoin idea where if UST could drop enough or a decent amount, a large enough amount of money comes in, swaps to Luna, at a one-to-one -one rate, so, so UST is say worth 80 cents, they're getting a dollar worth of Luna for that 80 cents. And you sell Luna, you make 20 cents profit, right? And you do that over and over and over again, and you drive the price of Luna down. Now, technically, when that UST is burning into or swapping into Luna, it should decrease the supply and the price of UST should go back up if there's still demand for UST. However, what happens when it got depegged and a lot of UST was sold, which which decreased the, the buying pressure on UST, then the markets get scared and everybody gets scared and people started selling UST. And so not only, it was basically, they call it the death spiral where there's this double effect basically of people selling UST and then arbitragers swapping into Luna and selling Luna and driving the price down. Now, where things got real, real bad is if you look at TerraUSD, and this is where we are now, TerraUSD is at 40 cents, supposed to be at a dollar, its market cap is $4.5 billion. Now, Luna is essentially backing Terra, so there needs to be, so what would happen is to pump the price of Terra back up, Luna would be sold and would be bought and would buy Terra. So essentially what happened is the Luna in the Luna Foundation was selling Luna 
and and dumping Luna to buy UST to put buying pressure to try and get that peg up. And it's just this double cascading effect, Luna crashing, the peg can't get back up to a dollar. And then what happens is you end up in the situation where you are now and where we were yesterday when I was looking at it, I was trying to decide what to do because I don't like fear selling. Um, and I think a lot of the times a lot of the markets move emotionally. However, when I was doing more and more research into this, it really seemed like this is an intrinsic problem with the <laughs> with this uh, product, basically with this protocol. Um, and where I what where you realize is we are essentially right now and as of yesterday we are underwater. So the market cap of Terra USD is 4.5 billion, and if we look over here, the market cap of Terra is 1 billion. So that means the value of Terra is over four times. That means there's only 25% of the actual value. If everyone's to pull their terror right now, only 25% can actually get their money. Um, so that's when I essentially realized, oh my gosh, we're underwater. Uh, Terra is essentially worth nothing at this point. Um, and that is when I decided to sell my UST. I took about a 40% hit, which was a bummer. I looked at it two nights ago. I could have got off with a, only a 20% hit to my UST, um, but I did dump it and I'm glad because now it's gotten even worse and it doesn't look like it's going to get better. Now there is a scenario, uh, I was doing more research and listening to what, what the Luna Foundation was announcing on their Twitter. So this came out yesterday morning in this proposal basically to increase the speed at which UST is burned to decrease the supply of UST and try and get the peg back to $1. Now essentially this does kind of make sense, but the problem is also is that by burning this UST, we're gonna be increasing the supply of Luna and then it's going to devalue Luna at the same time. Um, I think in the long term, it's maybe possible with some of the the size of the ecosystem of Luna, if there are enough believers and it can basically just survive, that eventually I think the peg can get back to a dollar, but I, I think it's unlikely. And I think it's for how much money I had in, I think is a big risk to take that chance. Um, and that's why I decided to cash out um, my UST and just take the loss. And, uh, and you know, that's part of crypto. And the thing is, is that through this experience, it's really taught me a good lesson. And, you know, I don't want to talk about other people learning a lesson because I think people learn some really hard lessons and it's really unfortunate. Um, but it did teach me a lesson that, hey, even these things that are, even this project that seems massive and it's one of the top projects and it has a massive amount of total value locked. And I was very bullish and I was just, waiting actually to buy into some more Luna at a good entry point, but I thought it was too high. I thought it was too close to its peak. And that's not where I like buying crypto. So I was waiting and waiting and waiting, even though I did get into UST and I was using Anchor Protocol, um, that these things, there is nothing actually supporting these. You know, it's only the belief in these assets that are being traded. And even in stocks, yes, there's a business that generates money and there's and there's your profits to earning ratios. But at the end of the day, if people don't believe this thing's worth anything, it can go to zero. So really assess your risk when you're investing in cryptocurrencies, really assess what you can handle to lose and what your strategy is. And I think we're, we're all, I mean, I, I've been doing really well. I'm still doing well in crypto, but it was a really great learning experience. And this correction is a good learning experience of this is a still extremely volatile industry. It's very new and there's a lot of risk and it's not a good place to be putting all your savings and to not be diversified and putting going all in on crypto, um, especially if you need that money to keep the lights on or pay your mortgage or feed your kids. You know, I would not recommend that. And also people getting liquidated. I've heard of so many people getting liquidated in Luna and borrowing against this stuff and using leverage. And I think unless you are a real expert, that is just, I mean, this crypto is risky enough as it is, let alone borrowing against it and taking on leverage. It's just a great way to lose all your money. Um, that's just uh, my opinion. Now, another thing about this that is very bearish and is very concerning is that there's now word coming out that Do Kwan uh, was part of one of the founders of Basis Cash, which is another algorithmic, uh, here I have it here, which is another algorithmic stable coin that also did not work.
and here you look at the price and um, you know, just because something doesn't work once doesn't mean it's not gonna work again. You, you think, oh, maybe you can learn, someone can learn from their mistakes and such and such, but this does raise a big red flag for me. And if you're planning on holding your UST and hoping it repegs, you know, I think it is possible. If, if eventually Luna can just continue to go on and they can burn enough UST, if you look at UST, because this is what I was doing, if you look at UST back, a stable coin. So the stable coin basically launched in uh, October of 2020. So if we go back to October, October of 2020, the stable coin was able to be there at a price of 30 cents uh, there. But so it's all about demand. If they can somehow create demand for their product again. But the thing is with Terra and Luna and these stable coins, it, you're selling trust. It's all about trust. And once that trust and that fear struck and people don't believe their $1 is gonna be worth $1, because there isn't any upside. There's no upside that, that UST is gonna double or triple. So you're, you're, you're betting on that because you trust that it's going to stay there. And if it doesn't, it's, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing. So I think, uh, you know, the, the future doesn't look good for Luna and UST in that case. I could be wrong. You know, you could hodl through this as possible. I actually am still holding some of my Luna because it's worth so little right now. I'm not going to sell it. Um, I actually didn't sell my Luna, but my UST I did do. And I was looking for, pro I was looking for videos, looking for information on can UST come back? Can anyone talk about UST? Because um, I think a majority of people, a lot of people were holding Luna. Um, but it was a tough call to make the decision to sell my UST and take the hit. Now, if we look at Anchor Protocol here, uh, it's just a huge sell-off here. We have $2.2 billion of UST. That's not $2.2 billion. So this is worth essentially about a third or 40% or of this. Um, total collateral is small. You know, this, this whole ecosystem just exploded. We look at, look over here at our total value locked, just off a cliff, just so, so sad. Um, it's really, uh, it's heavy. It's really heavy. I mean, that money, that money is real. 90, 80, 100 billion dollars just gone in thin air in one day. And a lot of those people are just are small mom and pops, you know, people like you, people like me, whatever, just trying to uh, increase our financial freedom and, and grow our wealth and, and, you know, be a part of some, be a part of this new technology. But there are costs and there are risks. And that's why going all in on one project, uh, even if you are so sure on it, and a lot of the projects I talk about on my channel, you know, I'm not putting all of my money in that. And I do try to, so there are probably some places I have too much exposure, but, but I am, there's that risk assessment, right? And you got to be ready to lose, I guess. That's, that's a part of this learning experience from, uh, part of the learning experience from Luna and Terra. So many of us didn't know about this. I did find a, a, a video, I'll shout out to Coinsider. He put out a video about a month ago talking about uh, Terra Luna being a Ponzi scheme. And I, I don't think it was a full Ponzi scheme, but it basically turned into that. And it, and it, it was just an extremely high risk uh, investment. And, but it was disguised, UST was disguised in this thing called a stable coin where you think it's stable, but, but it's just not. It's still, it's still backed by the fluctuation of the market and by the supply and the demand of Luna and UST as well. And also I think a really great, ex really great learning experience of this was seeing these really high yield protocols, these really high yield coins, uh, you know, it's not sustainable. When it seems too good to be true, now you learn, I guess it is too good to be true. To be getting 20% on your dollars, it's just, it's, it doesn't exist. And that's, and that's what happened. That's what we saw with Terra Luna. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you're okay. And, uh, you know, I, I feel, because I put out a video about Anchor Protocol as well, um, that, you know, that, that hurts. And, and 
there's a responsibility about talking about this stuff, but we also have a responsibility as buyers that we need to be aware and we need to be careful um, what we're doing in this cryptocurrency space. So keep aping, keep hodling. Woo!